I'm Catherine Banwell, your host for today's program. Joining me is Dr. Paul Barr. Dr. Barr, would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Paul Barr from the University of Rochester. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Cancer researchers came together recently to share findings at the annual American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting, also known as ASCO. Is there news from the meeting that CLL patients should know about? Uh, there is. Uh, it, it seems like at every major meeting, we have a uh, potentially practice-changing data set that we like to scrutinize and talk about. And this ASCO was no exception. Uh, I think probably the most impactful abstract was a, uh, a report, the first time we've seen the results, from a study that was called the Elevate Relapse Refractory Study. This was a randomized trial enrolling previously treated CLL patients who had high-risk disease and randomizing them to two of our, two of our very important BTK inhibitor treatments. Half the patients got a calibrutinib and the other half received a brutinib. And both, were, both groups were treated until the drug essentially either stopped working, uh, the disease became resistant, or it was stopped for side effects. So this was a, a study we have waited on the results for um, a long time, given that we don't often see these randomized studies um, comparing two such active agents. Um, and the results showed us that both drugs work really almost equally as well. The progression-free survival or the roughly the average amount of time patients are taking the drug was just over three years, 38 months in both arms. So they really work very well and equally as well. But we did see less side effects with the calibrutinib. And one of the most important side effects that the study was powered around was atrial fibrillation or flutter. There was less AFib or less new AFib in patients that were treated with a calibrutinib. There was also less minor bleeding, arthralgias, diarrhea. So a, a number of um, uh, perhaps less severe type side effects were less common. There was more headache and more cough in the calibrutinib treated patients. But I think overall, most, most of us took from this um, abstract that both drugs work ex exceptionally well and overall are very well tolerated treatments but there does look to be um, a, a lower rates of a number of important side effects with a calibrutinib. Dr. Barr, is there any other news from the conference that patients should know about? There is. Um, I'll give you a couple other additional um, findings. One was an update of um, a study we've seen the results before. It's sort of a partner study to the one I just mentioned. It was called the Elevate TN or Elevate Treatment Naive Study. These were previously untreated patients treated with uh, an old standard, a randomized study where the patients received either chlorambucil based therapy, uh, it was combined with um, a CD20 antibody, a benetuzumab. The second arm was single agent acalabrutinib, and the third arm was a calibrutinib plus a benetuzumab. Not surprisingly, both of the acalabrutinib arms continue to perform very well. The, the, the treatments work much better than chlorambucil. But now we have four-year data, and, and that's important for us to really understand what to expect as time goes on. And I think the major take-homes are that acalabrutinib continues to work very well in the first-line setting. There is a hint that a brutinib, uh, I'm sorry, that a benetuzumab may prolong the remissions, which is a little bit surprising to us. But again, small differences in the study wasn't powered to really look at that comparison. And also the major take home from that data set is that um, the safety still looks very good at four years for the patients receiving a calibrutinib. So, I think that's, that continues to shape our practice. And I think the last um, data set or abstract to comment on 
was one actually we saw at a different meeting at the European Hematology Association meeting, EHA. And this was another randomized study comparing two different BTK inhibitors in relapsed CLL patients. This one compared a brutinib and xanabrutinib. Um, like a calibrutinib, xanabrutinib is, is another more specific BTK inhibitor uh, when you compare it to a brutinib. And perhaps somewhat similarly to the Elevate Relapse Refractory study in this um, xanabrutinib or brutinib comparison, so-called Alpine study, we saw similar efficacy. Xanabrutinib actually looked like it performed a little better than a brutinib, but also again here, lower rates of side effects. So the theme continues for the more specific BTK inhibitors. They seem to work just as well, maybe a little better in some respects compared to a brutinib and somewhat lower rates of um, rates of side effects. So when you put it all together, all of the BTK inhibitors work exceptionally well. Um, we have varying degrees of follow-up and confidence. We, we have the most follow-up in our abrutinib treated patients. So we know what to expect for patients six, seven years out after being on abrutinib. But we're now seeing in these um, earlier studies that um, lower rates of um, various toxicities for the, the newer, more specific BTK inhibitors. So kind of a long-winded answer to your simple question, but hopefully that, that um, shows how um, the, this new and emerging data continues to shape how we take care of patients. Mm -hmm.